in the building, uh, coming all the way from L.A., all over the fucking country, realistically, <laughs> uh, trying to find you, man. We got Dave. She's a, she's a very, very, very talented fashion designer, uh, um, t- photographer, uh, graphic designer, uh, f- model, what have you. I mean, what don't you do? Man, I don't even know where to start. I mean, we've been been connected for for a few months trying to get this interview, um, trying to get this interview in. And um, I mean, even within a few months of growth, I really just don't know where to fucking start. So, I mean, uh, I say let's start. I mean, I guess what kind of got all of your creativity juices flowing? Well, since I was very young, Art has always been a part of what I did. Mm -hmm. Um, My grandfather is an artist, so I've always been exposed to painting and just art in general. So that kind of started off me painting and getting into photography and just everything um, Mm artsy-like. And so it's pretty much since you were young, you know, you kind of just had a natural knack at art, or is it something that you just took a liking to and really decided to like work towards it's you know it's really just a natural talent between the photography and the graphic design like I can naturally draw so the graphic design is just drawn on the computer so that comes easy to me mm. and the fashion design I've always been into clothes so that came easy to me as well as far as making it because anything I see I can duplicate it easily mm. really so you just have that natural talent of you know duplicating things and stuff like that just making things and you know so what about the photography because i mean you're and and that's what really got me because i'm really interested in photography obviously and you know some of your images i mean i've seen everywhere and i had no idea it was some of your work yeah which is crazy because i mean you know i was a ball player at one time so doing things with nike and stuff like that i might see different images stuff around chicago basketball stuff like that and i'm like then I'll, I went to your page and see stuff that connects right to it. And I'm like, holy cow, you know, right. like she was behind some of this shit. You're right. like, wow. You know, so what about the photography? How did you really get into doing that? I started photography. Really? Um, my granddad had cameras laying around and the, the disposable cameras mm. I always played with when I was younger. And then I when I was like 15 or 16, one of my friends got me a camera. And after that, it wasn't like a Canon though. It was just like mm. one of those cameras. It's a little rinky dick cameras. Right. Right. So then I ended up buying me a camera. My first concert I shot was DDG. Mm. And that was like last year, but I've always been into photography, but no one really knew until I started shooting concerts. Mm. So yeah, shout out to DDG and Doug for letting me shoot that concert. Because <laughs> that really sparked like a whole different avenue for me. Yeah. And I could see because it really, really took off. So, like, and, you know, from my understanding, like, we were talking a little bit off the air and stuff like that. You you actually really work for yourself yeah. at this point. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, how does that feel? For you to be so young, but to actually be able to say that you completely work for yourself and you're all over the globe. It's rewarding, you know, just I always knew that I wanted to work towards something for myself, like build my own and just have something to pass down or just to have something longevity for myself. And that's, I don't see it no other way. I would never work for anybody else. Really? I mean, I wouldn't work for anyone if I drove a BMW and (laughs) had nice Margiela's on in the studio as well. (laughs) Jesus Christ. This is a successful woman. I mean, I was, like I said, I was very, very excited because it's the first uh, time I had a solo woman on the session podcast. Mm -hmm. Um, and so this is this is something that, you know, a lot of women have been looking for when I put the questions out, like, what do you guys want to see? They always say more women. And so, you know, you, you might be one of the biggest inspirations to a lot of these women because you're so young. And like you say, you work for yourself. Um, you have nice things. You wouldn't have it any other way. Right. Um, and, and that's really big. So I guess I really want to know kind of what's the backstory on, you know, how Dage really got on, like how you began to get discovered how you decided to take initiative to work for yourself how it all started well i began working for myself when i was about in i would say eighth grade my mom really sparked the (laughs) (laughs) spark but she started 
she helped me and my sister start a clothing line, but it was just like a t-shirt line. Mm. So then that started, and I, you know, I put that away. I started playing basketball uh, my freshman and sophomore year, so that's really why I focused on the sports. Oh, you hooped so, a little bit? Yeah. Point, point guard, guard, I take it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she's, she's real life, probably 4'10". I'm 5 feet. It, yeah. You tried it. Where is the extra <laughs> two inches? Feet. You tried it. I, I literally opened the door to let her in, and, and he I almost right I, I literally looked right <laughs> over her, at, and I, it was not on purpose. I, I promise, like that's how short she is, and and I'm not that tall, guys. I'm only about six one on a good day, so barely. Yeah, <laughs> right, and you're barely five feet tall. Okay, so <laughs> anyway, um, so. Playing basketball my freshman and sophomore year, and then I ended up transferring to an art school, and that's when all the 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 fashion design and the graphic design came back into play. I mm. really just put it on the shelf for doing something else, but then I took it off once I got in my element and was around other creative people. Mm. So being around other creatives kind of just really sparked a lot of uh you know your initiative to kind of use that as your business and whatnot. I mean, it just changed your focus because. When I was playing basketball, that's what my focus was. But then when I, I knew what I wanted to do. I'm like, yeah, this is getting kind of old. But it really, I really stopped playing basketball because my coach left. So then after my coach left, I'm like, okay, I'm leaving too. <laughs> so I ended up going to an art school and just those, they push you to, you know, bring out that art and, and what you could do. So, yeah. Um, so, you know, the art school kind of really propelled you. And I mean, I mean, I've seen you've even gotten some good work in with uh, uh, Nike, Jordan. Uh, you do you doing a lot of different things. There was even work back as far as twenty sixteen. Uh, you doing some work with Jordan Brand. So you've been around and in the game of creative and and creativity and working for yourself for a really really long time now. I mean, you're really young, but still a really long time. I mean, you were almost like a pioneer. In, and, and doing so, especially being from Chicago. So it's something we need to definitely recognize, um, especially, you know, more positivity coming out of the city and things like that. Right. Um, so you do a lot, most of your work out in California? Yeah, it's both. I have a work, workspace here and workspace in L.A. And, you know, a lot of people feel like they have to move to L.A. to make it. Mm -hmm. But I feel like how whatever is meant for you is wherever you are. So yeah. It's both. And when I travel, it's, it's really everywhere. Mm. I could really go anywhere and work. That's the key. Really, actually, I mean, if you really subject yourself to one place. Yeah, it's just like, I only yeah. make it here, then mindset is... You kind of really can't grow too far. Right. I mean, you, you can do a lot, but you kind of can't grow too far. Um, that's interesting, man. So, you have your own clothing line as well. Mm-hmm. Correct? Yes. What's the name of the line? Matreya. Matreya. Um, so what does this line all consist of? It consists of men, women, and kids' clothes. The kids' um, clothes is called Matreya Munchkins, and the men and women clothes is just urban clothes mm. with the high fashion twist on it. So is it still in the works, or is there? are, you, are we actually able to, to get some of these pieces? Yeah, you're able actually... You're, <laughs> you're actually able to get some of the clothes but since i've started doing photography have you ever heard of a master what is the saying um i don't fucking a know a jack of all trades is Ugh. like a master of none mm. so you see how i do a lot of things yeah so since you're trying I, to focus in on one thing right, right now. so now that i've kind of perfected the photography now i'm back to the clothes because now that i can do that i can do both because mm. i i don't start one project project without finish the other so yeah so now you're gonna go back into the clothing line full-fledged yeah so the clothes was originally just on a line but now i'm gonna have it in a few stores in chicago so that's on the way Oh, a few stores. What are those few stores? Or can we not release? Can't mention it. Ah, uh, it's in the works. I hope I hope it's some of my faves though. There's a there's a few stores that I'm pretty sure you're gonna probably put them in that I can think of off rip. Uh, then we all talk about them, but I'm I'm pretty sure I can think of them. Um, so that's interesting. So you're actually about to drop in stores, 
Have you ever thought about dropping maybe your own store one day, or, or do you just want to keep it into like dropping some of your stuff into retail stores? Yeah, of course I thought about my own brick and mortar, but that's not really what I'm focused on right now. Um, but something like that is in the works. Oh jeez. It's not a, just a store, mm. but I'm gonna just leave that for. 2020. Oh, we'll come, come back. All right, all right. If you're vouching to come back, I can hold off until 2020. Recently, you were just shooting too at uh, the Morgan Park Whitney Young game. Yeah. How how the fuck? Like you just finally touched down and you and you already working that fast? Well, you know, like Jordan Brand is like my family. Nike is like my family. So. Mm-hmm. We all have like actual friendships. So one of my friends that's in within the Jordan brand actually invited me to come shoot the game. Yeah, nice. That was really good. That's big time. And I saw you actually got some good shots. Some of the uh, big time players were actually reposting it. Yeah. Those little motherfuckers got a lot of followers. Those, <laughs> are, <laughs> those little guys, they fucking knuckleheads, but they got a lot of followers, man. Those are my little guys. Shout out Morgan Park High School, man. Um, so back to Dej. Uh, doing a lot with this clothing line. So when can we expect this clothing line to to relaunch or, or kind of revamp with new product and new new clothes? I'm actually dropping the spring collection. So, so you're dropping this spring, yeah. spring 2020. We can expect some. So 2020 is really the year you're gonna just start yeah. flooding the streets with with most of your clothes. Is this some of your stuff now? No. Jesus Christ, you're supposed to come on. You're supposed to come on and wear your stuff, show that shit off. So we can be like trying to buy it and shit. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> That's usually what motherfuckers do in their fashion is as they come on with their shit, right, yeah. so they can show their shit off. I guess I don't know. But um, so you stopped hooping, went to art school, started getting some buzz with your work, or did it just like, or did you have to like apply to places to try to get on, or like, no? Did it just come to you? Because I've always did art. I've always knew what I wanted to do in life. It's just the opportunities just came. I never came to the big um, brands and said, I want to work with you all. They always gravitated towards me. So what was it like to, like, work with Nike? Did they just they shoot you a fucking email? Like, how does that fucking work? So working with Nike, I love them. I, everyone at the company is definitely like generous and they're like so genuine and they just really want to see you win as you know being like a student from the south side of Chicago they just really want to see you progress and you know change the circumstances of how everything the narrative usually is so I first started working with Nike I, when I transferred to the art school I actually did a fashion show and I I don't think anyone knew I did fashion but I, the person who was running the show at my school, I'm like, let me, please let me put my clothes in this fashion show. I already know I got something good. And I was the only student who had a line in the show. So that was kind of like the highlight of the show. Like, what is she about to put in it? So I think after I did that, um, like someone just reached out. But you know how the how the schools is like collaborative with Nike? Right. Um, just like how Morgan Park. So, right. right, so it was kind of like that. So it was already kind of like a spotlight on the school. So it was like, mm-hmm. oh, she do clothes. Let's fly out to uh, Portland, Oregon, and do the um Jordan. What's that? The Jordan um brand store in downtown. So just like that, one big break with getting your clothes into a fashion show, and Nike's beating down your door. <laughs> Basically. Heard. So so the ladies at home, make sure you guys are fucking. Getting your clothes and shit out there because you never know who's looking at it. Basically, is what we right, yeah, what we're here. Keep keep working. What's been the biggest like hardship you've had as like a fashion designer, photographer, you know, just as a creative in general? My biggest hardship. That's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> I would say just being able to manage it all. Because I I'm in I have so many business avenues. Like it's only me. Like I'm the only person that runs my business. I don't have like 
just like I said, I do all the graphics. I do make I make all the clothes. This is all cut and sew. This is not gilded t-shirts. So I pretty much run everything. And by me wanting to tap into so many other businesses, is it gets kind of tricky because people expect me to focus on one thing, but when I know I love like other stuff, it's kind of hard to manage everything because when I'm doing the clothes, I have to pack ship, mm -hmm. and do all that, and go to the post office, do that. And then the photography, I'm getting sent out to different states. The actual I'm bullshit going. that you could cut a check for. You know, exactly, like. but I'm doing it all by myself. So it's definitely just managing everything that I want to do because I want to do so much more. Mm -hmm. So finding a way to kind of center, you might have to get a team. I mean, I think it may it might be the time to just you know maybe start small, one or two people that are just you know you can f fill some interns, um, you know some That's people. That's hard. Uh, I mean, I think if you if you look in the right places, I mean, you never know how powerful your voice might be, and so if you voice that you want to build a team of creatives and you want people that are serious and you're ready to go when they are and if they're ready to let's do it you know you never know who's looking you know just like your fashion show mm -hmm. yeah. so i think you, and, and at this platform now you have more of a, a platform and voice to be able to build a team the way you only want it it's only your business right. so you can pick and choose so now i think it's just about being selective exactly you know? that's the thing you don't you can't have like certain people around because you don't know their intentions so well, yeah, you definitely have to fucking Christ. You definitely have to be over selective, right. um, you know, with your brand. But right, you know. so it don't come easy, but it's in the works. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So definitely. with certain aspects of the business, not just with the photography side, I can manage that in the clothes. But then it's like the other things I want to tap into. Mm. That's when I'm really the team part comes into play. So what else are you trying to tap into? Cause you're already a fashion designer, photographer, graphic designer. Like, what else are you trying to expand to? Tapping into the music industry. <laughs> you have to exhale. <laughs> so you as an artist? Yeah. Oh fuck yeah! Y'all heard that shit here first. For sure. Oh yeah, this is gonna be dope. So you're gonna now? Oh fuck yeah! This is awesome. So you, singing, rapping, what are we rapping. doing? Rapping. And I pretty much already have my team for the music. That's because. That's oh, so this crazy. shit's ready to go. Right. So that's so crazy oh, that. Fuck. I've been around the people in the music industry for a long time because of my dad. So it's really easy to get in contact with people and have my team ready for that aspect. But what I'm doing as far as my other part of my business, I don't see. A lot of people doing it so it's kind of hard to build the, the team for that yeah yeah you're right because it is you know that's pretty scarce it's it's yeah something. it's something new and then if you say like you've been around music industry and stuff like that pretty much your whole life that's something you're obviously a little bit more inclined to doing right. um but fuck so this is when are we when are we going to see this is 2020 just it's yes, all oh, <laughs> fucking god we have to have you sure. back in 2020 the summer. Is it, oh dude this shit's gonna be crazy so what the fuck what's the what's are you going as days what what's the rap see that's see me personally i work out the business aspect and the creative part before i figure out the little stuff like that mm. so we going for because if i actually you think the name is a little part you yeah. think the stage name is a little part that's something that that's something that Hmm. You think so? Yeah. Hmm. Okay. That's interesting. I feel like and people put a lot of thought into their names, you know. Right, and not saying that it wouldn't be a lot of thought put mm -hmm. into it, but other things that way more important need to be thought out. A lot of background stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So. Jesus Christ. Oh man, so you this is gonna fuck our heads all the way up. Right. So wow. Should I, should I have told you that? Yeah, you should have. I'm dropping Thank gems you. on you. Nah, no, nah, this shit's great. <laughs> so oh, man, I can probably already think of some artists right, offhand. Shout out to Eris too. She's one of the people that's first one of the first people who's hearing the songs. Hmm. So you have shit lined like that lined up. Like mixed mastered, 
just we, ready to hit upload. We're working like this. I would never go into something and not be prepared for it. So before, I should not be probably even talked about it because you know, just want to drop it as a as a surprise. Oh man, but that's cool. so crazy. <laughs> I mean, you know, we still won't know what I like. I, I can't. You said rapping. I was thinking some more singing, but like you said, rapping. Now I'm like even more like, what the fuck? I don't even know how you like. I can't. I'm trying to picture how you sound, and here we are earlier trying to talk about how your voice sound on the fucking right, microphone. Right. So now I'm like, Jesus Christ, you know, like this shit is gonna be a fucking. And I actually, I have a background in dancing and performing, so. Sweet, are you? So it's kind of just so more of like a written book for you, right. just whenever you were written. Well, actually, book, yeah. it's like it's been a lot of little hints. Like my dad been wanting me to do music. That um, Lady Ayers, who I mentioned, she been years ago, like two thousand like fourteen, wanting me to do music. Some time that you you were, you already knew you were a creative. That mm-hmm. was a given, and then you took some time to learn how visuals things like that work and now that you feel that you've actually like you just said mastered the visual aspect you're now going to use that to your advantage and turn yourself into an artist exactly you finessing (laughs) genius wow this is great so i mean this is great guys this is just a true testament i think though that you know with a little bit of like thinking (laughs) And believing in yourself realistically, uh, you know, you can really brand yourself into whatever it is you want. I mean, that's realistically what you've just done is branded yourself into whatever you want. Whether it's been from art to your clothing to your photography and visuals um, until, like you say, going into the up and coming new days, the artist, whatever the the stage name would be. (laughs) Oh, fuck. God damn. (laughs) Why the fuck is this happening? Ugh, this is goofy. See, you laughing and shit, fucking up the... Goddamn. Somebody come get her ass. Who? You. Me? I thought you were talking about her. Your ass, nigga. What'd I do? I don't know where the fuck we was at. We been having some difficult, y'all. We done had some difficulties in this studio today. Technical. Just some technical bullshit, y'all. Y'all just don't know what the fuck going on, man. She just came through here and just I don't know. Anyhow, man, we got Dej, the artist. Fuck. <laughs> That's what I was saying the last time for the last bullshit. Um, don't know the real stage name yet, but that's that's amazing just to see how you've completely branded yourself to be whatever you want to be. And from my understanding too, you also have a fucking a book. Like you're you're writing a book. Oh, it's already finished. You wrote a book. Yeah. So okay. I started that book in I want to say June, mm. and it was for a project I was doing with Virgil, off white Virgil. And so, once it got, like, once I seen a response from it, I'm like, okay, maybe I need to pull this and re, like, rearrange it to put it in schools. So, in, like, January or February, um, I have the books ready to be in some of the CPS schools. Specifically, Art in Motion, that'll definitely be in their school within, like, this month and next month. First, I love how you casually say that you were doing a project with Virgil from Off White. Like, it was yeah, just someone. Approval. Like, he isn't Louis Vuitton's. He never got approved. <sighs> so, that don't really count. It never really went through. But to the but the workspace. Yeah. That's elite. <laughs> like, that is like, you know what I mean, though? Like, that's elite workspace. Yeah. That must feel great. And then to go to have your book being put into CPS schools. Mm-hmm. Wow. That's a lot. Well, first off, it's an interactive workbook incorporated mm-hmm. with art therapy. So it's what. Mm. So wait, 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 wait. Slow it, slow it down. Okay. It's an interactive workbook. Right. Incorporated mm-hmm. with art therapy. 
What the fuck is art therapy? It's therapeutic art. So it's a workbook, right? Mm -hmm. So within a book, it's like responses. Like you can have responses and like draw, right? You can paint on it Mm. and like things like that. So it's like a, it's a learning tool using art. It's like art therapy. I'm trying to understand what I just don't know what I'm Okay, so for some people like art therapy is used for war veterans. Mm. To like for PTSD. Mm. So it's like an actual form of like real therapy. Like, yeah, in a book. Okay. So initially when I made the book it was for my friends cuz you know just being friends with people that's from Chicago, you know they have PTSD and you know they have depression and things like that. So I really made it for them, and that's why I said I had to re, like, format the book to put it into school so it would be more school appropriate. Mm. It's it's the same thing, but it just had to be rearranged, and, yeah. Wow. So you, wow. So you're also into mental health, um, essentially. Um, I, I feel like it's just the, the art is a way I can help. But it's like in my form because it's art. Mm-hmm. So it's it's almost like a coloring book, mm-hmm. and it's also somewhere you can write and mm-hmm. express your feelings and things like that. So and I think the students of CPS need that. When can we see this book in CPS schools? In the beginning of twenty twenty. As far as like January, <coughs> February. Right. Okay. Wow. I need to get my hands on a copy of that. I have one in the car. I need a personal copy of that signed, please. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That is gonna. That is legendary. I think that is honestly legendary. That's crazy. Wait. Oh, and <laughs> that's crazy. Just to throw you another little gem. With the workbook, I supposed to be, I um have a something possibly in the works with social works. Uh, I, I, I felt that yeah. to the core before you said it. I actually talked I to them felt about it. it. Mm. I actually talked to them about it at um, ComicsCon. Mm. So. <laughs> you gotta keep that in there. <laughs> uh, Rocking like this, man. All right. No bap. Y'all know how we run. I'm from the trenches anyway. Shit, I've been getting down for a long time. Uh you said you had you had we on the social works. Damn, that shit crazy. Alright, we on the social works though. And you said you said what now? You had I talked to him about it at Complex At Complex Con. That was the last thing you said for this motherfucker hit my chest and shit. Alright. And then what else? That's what I said. So Complex Con. So you just walked up to them and was like, yo, I got some shit I'm trying to do. I told them about the book and I mm. we both agreed that it'd be perfect for what they trying to do. You walked up with like the blueprint, all that, or you was just it was like the the um like one of the first copies I've made. So it wasn't perfect, but it was mm. it was my ideas out of my head. So they liked it. Oh, so you just you uh, so you had a rough draft copy already? Oh no, it was like it was the finished product, but it was like the first one prototype type yeah. deal, right? So dope. So you was able to really you know market it there and, mm-hmm. and maybe get somebody's opinion on it. And, let them see what your vision was and where your head was going with that. Right. I seen. I initially saw the reaction from it from when I was working with Virgil. So I, that's mm. when I pulled it. That's like, okay, you knew. it's not approved, but this is something that could really work. Right. Right. You just so, knew. Yeah. Yeah. Virgil. If Virgil, the creative god, essentially sure. says, I mean, fuck, says says it's green light, then you know it's green light. So smart move to pull it and. You know, do what you got to do to get things approved and really get it out here because, you, like you said, people going to need that. Yeah, and I know sure. you say, you know, things like PTSD and depression. Like, I'm no fucking doctor, but I'm, I know a lot of people and I'm pretty sure even a, a few of us have had, you know, moments of PTSD and, you know, slight depression, whatever it may be. It's, and it's really like, like I, I made it for my friends to help them cope. Yeah. It's, we're losing, like, 10 friends within a year and that's not normal. That's not normal. So... It's I, not normal. I definitely made it to help, but then once I seen the response, I'm like, okay, other people need this, and I need to do this quickly. Yeah, this is something the streets needs. Yeah, this is definitely something that the streets needs. You know, I mean, we talk a lot about when somebody about to drop some heat or something like the streets need this, but this is something right. realistically is- that I feel the streets needs, and 
like coming from that perspective of a coping mechanism um you know just someone that can speak to that i'm always looking for new ways of meditation and ways to get my mind off bullshit that's been going on right. and especially being in chicago on a day-to-day basis from the south side you know there's a lot of bullshit going on on a day-to-day basis that you just don't like to see all the time right. so something like that for the young kids that in school they can see and have something to be involved with you never know what they might be coping with some of these people lose their, their family you know as close as their fathers and mothers and it, yeah, it can it's, be hard it's really for the kids who don't know anything else this yeah. is us it's a world so much bigger than Chicago yeah. and what the streets are doing. Yo, that's the crazy thing is that so, a lot of people don't really get out of Chicago to see what else is out here. Yeah, I've been everywhere. And it's sometimes I just like, this exists. I could mm-hmm. never have my mindset if I want to stay in Chicago. And I just, it's so much stuff better than, you know, what people see. Yeah. And it's exposed to. It is. It's a lot of stuff out here. My first time seeing the mountain, I was in Utah. I was like, like just I was just struck, like, yeah. you know, riding through canyons. When I saw that, I was just kind of going crazy, like, man, this is like real, like, yeah. this stuff actually exists, you know. And it's just it's different ways of living everywhere, and people really got to be exposed to that. And that's something that I think we need to preach more to our people in Chicago. It's like, yeah. it's more than just your blocks and you know downtown. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Motherfuckers think downtown is the shit. I'd be like, it is. You know, Chicago downtown is dope, but you know, it's a lot more out here. Right. Damn, that's Pretty crazy, man. You seriously, it is. Um, it's just crazy, man. I appreciate you really coming through, man. I know you have the busiest schedule, as everybody can probably tell right now. She has a very, very busy schedule, so you guys can imagine how how hard it was for me to get this interview. So I do appreciate you uh, taking the time to come out and talking to us. Um, you know, you really are a spark of energy. And, you know, even within myself, you just kind of sparked me to be a little bit more creative and focus on my own craft. Like you said, so you can take the initiative to never work for any other person again. And I think that a lot of people need to take that message that she just brought to us today take that with with good grace and, and don't really let that blow over your head because here's someone actually doing it in the flesh like what she's telling you generation guys wolf. man trying to, it down man trying to build it man building wealth make sure y'all had kids pass it down you know that's what it's about for real <laughs> and y'all building that generational wealth um days i appreciate you coming through fashion designer Thanks for photographer uh uh, be quiet now, but artist coming soon, uh, and author of, of a book for for people in CPS schools coming soon, and possibly more after that. Thank you for coming. Of course, I appreciate you. Thank you.